Professor Dower, it's, uh, it's an honor to have you here. Uh, I've been a, an admirer of your work for two decades now. And your latest book, Cultures of War, is something that um, is so sweeping and so impressive that uh, I want to thank you for this opportunity to sit down and be able to have this conversation. Um, You're could kind. You, thank you. Could you start by um, telling us how you, you, you're a historian of Japan, both imperial and, and post-war Japan. How is it that you came to write this book that links uh, both uh, Pearl Harbor, Hiroshima, 9-11, and then the Iraq War? What, made, what, what gave you the idea to make those linkages? Well, in this case, I think it was that moment that all of us remember exactly where we were. It was 9-11. And uh, I happened to be at that time in Vermont, in rural Vermont. 9-11 occurred. I saw it in a store in a, in a little town. And then the newspapers came out, the local newspapers. And both newspapers had headlines saying, infamy, day of infamy. And I work on Japan. I've, I've written on uh, World War II, Pearl Harbor, Japan after the war. And of course, infamy is the Pearl Harbor word. And uh, suddenly, everywhere, the word infamy was coming up. I, I think if you go back, and I did it one time, and look at all the newspaper headlines that came out in September 11, September 12, September 13, I would say 10, 15 percent use the word infamy or President, President Roosevelt's famous phrase, a date which will live in infamy. They would use the whole phrase. And so there was the immediate association with Japan, stab in the back, treachery, and because it was airplanes crashing into the buildings, suddenly we started talking about kamikaze attacks. So. Japan was pulled into it again, even though kamikaze had nothing to do with uh, Pearl Harbor. And then you began to get um, things like, we will never forget there was a billboard outside of Chicago, for example, and on one side it had December 7, on the other side it had September 11, and in the middle, we will never forget. Nobody needed a footnote to understand that. Pearl Harbor 9-11. We will always remember these dates, which is true. And then there was a great sense of revenge. We will pull together. And of course, uh, if you thought about it, and what was very clear at the time, there were real similarities, the surprise, the shock, uh, and the fact that when Pearl Harbor happened, President Roosevelt was presiding over a very divided country. Isolationists, people who felt we should do more in the war in Europe. And when 9-11 occurred, President Bush was just beginning an administration uh, after an election that had really fractured the country. And so the country pulled together on both occasions. So this was the first a uh, thing where people were using Japan uh, and Al-Qaeda, the poor Japanese, you know, they had tried for so many decades since Pearl Harbor, six decades or five decades since the end of the war to be our good friend and suddenly, boom, here it is again, remember Pearl Harbor. Uh, but the second thing that came very quickly on the heels of that infamy was what a colossal failure of intelligence on the part of the United States. Um, so you had another level there where how could the Americans have been caught by surprise in this manner? And then you started to get other people coming in with different things, non-Western country, non-Christian culture, non-white peoples have attacked us. And you began to get into the rhetoric of clash of civilizations once again. This is a great clash of civilizations, clash of cultures. And I found it interesting because you could see why it was happening, but there were all sorts of problems with it. And um, the problems got more complicated when suddenly 9-11 uh, and it's great simple, the, word, the, the World Trade Center became ground zero. Uh, 
Now, I've, I've written a lot on, on World War II. I've, I've worked on, on the war, and, and I come from the Japanese side. But I've also worked on the atomic bombs, as you have, uh, in great depth. And I've seen it from many perspectives. And to me, ground zero was a World War II term. And uh, ground zero meant Ground Zero, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and that's really where we began using it. If you went back to the test of the first atomic bomb in New Mexico in July 1945, uh, for years thereafter there was a little wooden sign saying Ground Zero, and we always used that word for um, Ground Zero meant Hiroshima, Nagasaki. Suddenly it had been appropriated and almost expropriated for the World Trade Center. And the, the, the funny thing was, I kept waiting for someone to say, ground zero, weapons of mass destruction, for someone who thinks historically, where has this word come from? And of course it came from World War II and weapons of mass destruction that t terrify us come out of that experience, uh, but no one made the connections. It was as if we had just taken it and there was no way of thinking about uh, the original Ground Zero. And then you began to have the language of terror bombing. Now, any historian of World War II just routinely has used the word terror bombing for World War II. And it occurs primarily in conjunction with the Anglo-American air war, first in Europe and then finally in Japan, that culminates in Hiroshima, Nagasaki. And uh, it's a concept that we address in terms of psychological warfare. In modern war, you must destroy the morale of the enemy. That's one of the weapons of war. You destroy the industry, you destroy the armies, you destroy the morale of the enemy, and it, beca it became standard operating procedure in World War II to deliberately target densely populated urban areas. So we tend to think of Hiroshima, Nagasaki, if we think of them at all in isolation, but that was the culmination of a campaign that began in, against Germany and then was carried out by the Americans in Japan that targeted over 60 Japanese cities before the atomic bombs. But that kind of thinking of terror bombing in terms of uh, what we do in our modern wars, part of the culture of our modern wars, that did not get into the discussions or the discourse. What you did instead was say, this um, bombing was done by non-state actors, so this made them different than the past, and it shows us, and if you go back to right after 9-11, I mean, it was a ghastly crime against humanity, but all of a sudden, into the present day, you keep having people writing, this shows us the barbaric nature of Islamic culture and of, these, uh, of the Koran and of the Islamic fundamentalists. They do not respect human life as we do in our Western tradition. This is a true clash of civilizations. And so there were so many issues coming up here for me. I said, I've, I, I've got to try to sort all this out. Why do you have the, um, you know, the, the real similarities, the, the failures of intelligence? Why do we have these false analogies? Why, why what can we make of ourselves uh, as people in the modern world. And the way I had come to think of it over the years, but was crystallized then, was not in terms of clash of civilizations, but in terms or clash of cultures, but that modern war itself is a culture. We, we, we're 
trapped in the coils of war. We, have, we are in wars and wars and wars and wars. The technology is getting more and more sophisticated. Uh, and I was, that's why the book I wanted to do was called Cultures of Wars, because I wanted to sort this out. It doesn't mean it's all relative. Obviously, it's not all relative, but the mo there's a dynamic in the modern wars. Uh, and this threw me into it. And so I said, well, I'll do a little book on this after 9-11. And I had written about World War II. I have written and I had vowed never to deal with war again because, as you know, when we throw ourselves as researchers in this, it's in its own way, you know, it's nothing like what people experienced at the time. There's no comparison whatsoever, but it's exhausting. It's so exhausting. And I didn't want to go on, but I did. <laughs> no, this is wonderful. I mean, uh, you, you talk about um, re recovering memory, which is what history is in, in yeah. so many ways. Um, and you point out in your, in your book that the terror bombings actually began prior to the U.S. entry in, in, into World War II. Um, that the Japanese bombed Chinese cities, the Germans bombed Guernica, um, even the Zeppelins in World War I were a form yeah. of terror bombing. Uh, and yet, and they were universally condemned as terror bombing, and yet by the, by, as the war progresses, the Allied powers do precisely that. And can you talk about the, the, the cultural shift that takes place? Yeah, that, uh, many years ago, in the 1980s, I, I finished a book uh, which uh, was about the U.S. and Japan, the, uh, World War II in the Asia-Pacific. Uh, 